Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey was born in February of 1818 on Maryland's eastern shore. Son of a slave, Frederick spent the majority of his childhood with his aunt and grandparents, seeing his mother only four or five times before her death when he was seven. During his childhood, he was exposed to brutal slavery, including whippings. Only eight years old, Frederick was auctioned off to a carpenter living in Baltimore. It is at this point that Douglas first read of the abolitionist movement, later saying, It laid the foundation and opened the gateway to all my subsequent prosperity. Douglas was sold to a slave breaker by the name of Edward Covey, who was notoriously brutal. Douglas was hardly fed and whipped every day. On January 1st, 1836, Douglas made a resolution that he would be free by the end of the year. He planned an escape, but in early April, he was jailed after his plan was discovered. Two years later, on September 3rd, 1838, Douglas finally was able to escape and traveled by train, steamboat, and train again to New York. Several weeks later, he traveled to New Bedford in Massachusetts. Frederick married a woman who he had met when he was a slave in Baltimore. It is at this time that he changed his name from Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey to Frederick Douglas. Living under his new name, Douglas started to read again, he joined a black church, and even attended abolitionist meetings. In 1841, Douglas saw William Lloyd Garrison, an abolitionist, speak at the Bristol Anti-Slavery Society's annual meeting. Douglas was moved by Garrison's speech, later saying, No face and form ever impressed me with such sentiments as did those of William Lloyd Garrison. The two became friends, and at age 23, a few days later, Douglas spoke at the Nantucket Anti-Slavery Society's annual convention. His speech about his life as a slave was moving, and was spoken in a very eloquent manner. Impressed by the speech, members of the society asked Douglas to become a permanent member. Later, Douglas published a narrative about his life as a slave. People warned him that this was dangerous because he was still technically an escaped slave. As a key member of the Anti-Slavery Society, Douglas traveled to Europe giving speeches about his life as a slave. During his tour in Europe, he first went to London, then to Edinburgh, and finally Dublin before returning home. When he returned home, he published his first issue of the North Star. This four-page weekly newspaper was dedicated to the current events surrounding the anti-slavery society and abolitionist movement. Over the years, the views of Douglas and Garrison ultimately diverged. Garrison began to represent the more radical abolitionists. He denounced churches, political parties, even voting. He also believed that the Constitution was a pro-slavery document. In addition, Frederick Douglass was becoming more of an independent thinker. For example, at one of his speeches in Syracuse, he said, The Constitution could be wielded in behalf of emancipation. Douglass also did not advocate the dissolution of the Union, since it would isolate slaves in the South. This difference in opinion led to a bitter dispute between Garrison and Douglas. Another famous abolitionist, Harry Beecher Stowe, tried to reconcile the differences between the two by sending a letter to William Lord Garrison. Sadly, the dispute continued through the Civil War. During the Civil War, Douglas conferred with Abraham Lincoln and helped recruit African Americans for the Union Army. After the war, Douglas would continue to fight for the rights of women and African Americans alike. On February 20th, 1895, Douglas attended a meeting with the National Council of Women in Washington, D.C. After the presentation, he was given a standing ovation by the audience. Shortly after he returned home, Douglas died of a heart attack or a stroke. Frederick Douglass led a life dedicated to the abolishment of slavery and to the promotion of black rights and women's rights. He was a gifted orator who used his word to change the minds of many.